It's a commercial van. It's a camper van. This is the 2022 Ford Transit Connect cargo van. Steve here, Cars with Steve, and we're gonna dive in and learn everything we need to know about this vehicle. And it is crazy what you can do with this thing. There are some pretty crazy upfittings that people have done, turning them into camper vans, all sorts of different options if you're using it commercially as well. Now, a few things about the Ford Transit Connect. It's assembled in Turkey. It's available strictly front wheel drive. In Canada, there's only one engine choice, unless you're a fleet customer. Down in the States, you've got access to both of the engine choices, whether you're a fleet or a regular retail customer. There are two different trim levels for this vehicle as well, the XL or the XLT. Now, before we dive into this van and figure out what it's all about, I wanna give Formula Ford a huge thank you for giving me access to this thing so I can shoot the video for you today. Check down into the description below for their contact details. And this is going to be a pretty in-depth walk around. You're gonna learn everything you need to know about the cargo version of this van. If you're looking for one on the Transit Connect passenger wagon, check down below. If you wanna know how to use the sync media screen or how to use the instrument cluster, the steering wheel buttons, all that fun stuff, check down below for those walk arounds instead. But let's dive into it. Let's unpack this van and figure out why people love this vehicle. The exterior of the Transit Connect is fairly nice. It's lower profile than the full-size Transit van. But one thing that's different is that the Transit Connect is strictly available front wheel drive. 16 inch tires, whether you're in the XL or the XLT as well. But having said that, there are three individual choices for the rims. So if you wanna customize them a little bit, you've got the flexibility to do that. We do have our halogen headlamps there and then our fog lamps down below. Now the fog lamps will be standard in the XLT. So something to think about there. But taking a look, we do have our forward sensing system. And that's one of the cool things because we can add in the forward and the reverse sensing system or just the reverse sensors. Now, one thing to note, if you want the forward sensing system, you do have to look at the XLT trim level. It's not available whatsoever on the XL. So I honestly, for the couple dollars difference between the XL and the XLT, it is worth looking at it. We've got a wireless charging pad. We get the larger Sync 3 media screen, which supports Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. The backup camera is on a larger screen rather than a tiny forward orange thing where it's barely visible. So something to think about. I do normally recommend looking at spending the couple of extra bucks for the XLT. It's about a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks depending on how you have the thing configured, but it is useful to go that route instead. As I mentioned, front wheel drive and we do have our black moldings along the bottom there. And then we do have those power folding side view mirrors. I mean, really, you can customize this if you're okay with waiting because they're assembled in Turkey. It takes quite a little bit of time in order to reach North America. So you're typically looking like a four to six month lead time. So if you want a fleet of these things, go to your local Ford dealer. You're gonna have to wait a little bit if you want these things fully customized. Now, moving towards the front end of the vehicle, we do have our headlamps there, fog lamps down below, and then typical Ford styling with our blue Ford badge in the middle of this grille. And it does contrast nicely that nice black and white look, but I gotta say, I saw a black Transit Connect recently and that black on black look with this van looks amazing. You could look at wrapping the vehicle as well, but it's gonna depend on are you throwing decals on and things like that, because there are a ton of different options that are available. Right. Now, getting underneath the hood of the Transit is pretty straightforward. Just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, actually technically closer to the door, we do have a little latch. We're just gonna pull that in order to unlock, and then to open it, we do have a little yellow piece there, so we just have to twist that open, and we're set to go. Not on hydraulics, but it is a nice look. Now, we do have two available engine choices for the Transit Connect. It's the two liter naturally aspirated, so a non-turbocharged, or there's a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated. So in Canada, if you're a fleet customer, you've got access to either the two liter or the 2.5. If you're down in the States, you've got, the, you've got access to the two liter or the 2.5. It doesn't matter if you're a retail or a fleet customer. So you do have kind of a leg up on us there. But looking, we do have the two liter engine that I'm looking at here in Canada. And this thing pushes at 162 horsepower and 144 pound feet of torque. Well, the 2.5 liter that's optional in Canada, available in the US as well, 169 horsepower and 171 pound feet of torque. So a little bit of a difference from a power perspective. Now, one interesting thing, the 2022 Transit, so the full-size Transit, Ford has introduced what's known as the E-Transit, which is a fully electric van. Now, as of right now, there aren't any rumblings or any news or anything like that, whether this Transit Connect is going to get that same technology, 
but I mean, the writing's kind of on the wall. We've got gas engines that are kind of going out the door, We're looking at hybrid drivetrains and things like that. So it would be nice to see this at least as a hybrid to improve fuel economy. I do think we're probably gonna see this thing in electric though as well, which is kind of nice. Now we do have very easy access to a number of things, so we can easily top up some fluids if we need to. We can really easily check our oil there as well. And then also easy access to the battery off to the side. So overall though, it is fairly nice. If you're the type of person you prefer to change lamps and things like that yourself, but it's not necessarily impossible to be able to do it, you can kind of reach these things. But one of the great things is that you do have the option for some commercial maintenance packages and things like that as well. And you can get that when you do purchase your vehicle from a Ford dealer. Now, filling up fuel inside of the Transit Connect is pretty straightforward. So it's just along our passenger side there. And as you can see, capless system, insert your fuel hose, fill up, and you're good to go. Now looking at fuel quality, your regular 87 gas in either engine, so the two liter or the 2.5 liter. But there is an interesting thing. When you order your van from the factory, you do have the option of having flex fuel capability put into this vehicle. So you'd be able to use E85. So if your local gas stations or the areas that you typically work have that E85 capability, you could add flex fuel in directly at the time of ordering from the factory. Now, as we move towards the back end of the vehicle, we've got our Transit Connect badge there and our XLT badge along the right side because this is obviously the XLT trim level. If you were in the base XL, you just wouldn't have a badge along the side there. Now, a few things to point out, we do have our backup camera, which is a North American standard. So you're gonna get that backup camera if you're on the XL or the XLT, doesn't matter. But the reverse sensing system that we've got there is going to be optional inside of the XL version of the vehicle as well. And then we can also package in the XLT to get the reverse and that forward sensing system. So it's a nice thing. Now looking at some of the capacities inside of this thing, towing wise, doesn't matter if you're in the two or the 2.5 liter, you're gonna max out at 2000 pound towing capacity. We look at payload and we're at about 1600 pounds as well. So there is a nice amount of weight that can be pulled inside of this. Obviously, if you're kind of nickel and diming and getting very close to your towing or your payload, you'd wanna look at maybe just the regular transit van instead, because that'll be able to pull infinitely more than this thing will. But if you're just looking for something nimble, you're looking for something easy, it's a good option. Now looking at the overall payload and towing and things like that, all of the numbers make a difference. So if you've got, let's say, two full-size versions of me, that's 360 pounds that's gonna take away from your payload capacity as well. You have tools and things like that, so you have to make sure that it's a good balance. Just make sure that you're aware of what kind of gear you're putting into the vehicle to make sure you're not maxing out on your payload or you're towing too much, because the last thing you'd wanna do, damage the motor, damage the drivetrain, and things like that. Next up, taking a peek at the key fob of the vehicle. So typical Ford styling along the back, we do have our Ford logo there. Top end of the fob, we've got our lock and our unlock button, our side door release, as well as our horn or our panic alarm. We also do have our regular key there. So it's something to think about. We do have a regular key inside of the Transit Connect cargo van. Now one interesting thing, so as you can see there, we don't have remote start directly on this fob, but we would have the flexibility of using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay with the Ford Pass app in order to be able to remote start that way if we'd want to, which is definitely a nice thing. Now, one interesting thing about the Ford Transit Connect, I mean, you can kind of already see it with the side doors there, which is interesting, but the back doors here as well. So they're dual cargo doors. So we can literally just grab in order to be able to open up. We've got a handle for the next door there as well, which is great. But one of the cool things about these cargo doors, we do have a little yellow button on both sides. So we can push that in order to be able to extend them out a tiny little bit more. So fully open 180 degrees, which is great. But look at the cargo dimensions of the van. So we do have a nice amount of width, depth, and height, but one thing to consider. Now I do have a series of different measurements that are coming up for the van. We've got one specifically for the loading area, and we've got one if you move in a little bit. So you'll get a couple extra inches of height. You lose a couple extra, you lose about an inch and change roughly between the wheel wells there as well. And then up overhead, we do have a beam right across the top there as well. So you do get a couple extra inches in part of the area here. So just something to think about. If you're doing upfitting, you're turning this thing into a camper van and things like that, you will lose a tiny little bit of space right in the middle here because of this drop down component as well. But you could cut out different options. You've got some options for windows and things like that as well. You can get it time of ordering from the factory. You can install aftermarket and things like that. All right, now looking at the back end of the vehicle. So I'm six feet tall and me just kind of casually sitting down here, I have a ton of headspace, which is definitely a nice thing. 
you know, depending on what you're doing, you're turning it into a camper van, whatever the case may be, we do have a finished floor that's going to come standard inside of the cargo version of the Transit Connect. So nice kind of rubberized floor there. We do have a little foam pad underneath as well. So you could technically rip this whole thing out and then it would just be unfinished like what we see along the side walls there as well. We do have a 12 volt power point in the back here, which is always a nice thing. And we have six individual tie downs. So we've got three on the driver and three on the passenger side. Now this thing does have a spare tire as well. So we've got our unlock just right along the back here. And then the tire itself is actually just located right underneath the vehicle, but fairly nice. And like I said, ton of space back here because I'm six feet tall. Ugh. I'm like, I could comfortably lay back here and up overhead, I've still got like a foot and change roughly of space. I would say just under a foot. So it is nice to know that if you're a little bit taller, you could probably easily convert this thing into a camper. Now, looking at the doors themselves, the cargo version of the Transit Connect is going to have dual sliding doors. So we've got a door on the driver and the passenger side. We can easily open and close it from the inside there as well. And we do have a series of different options for glass. So we do have the option for fixed glass in the front, in the rear, etc. And even in the back so for those cargo doors. If you wanted fixed glass on your Transit instead, it is an option. Getting it done after market is a teeny bit pricey unless you're doing it yourself but you do have the option of getting it done directly from the factory. So I would definitely recommend sit down with one of these Ford reps. They definitely know what they're talking about and they can help you figure out the exact build based off of your needs. Now, having said that, we do have our regular mirrors there. And because we're in the XLT, this thing's got what's known as the Ford Copilot 360 package. And what that means is we've got our lane keeping system. We've also got the blind spot system. So that lets us know if anybody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. So we've got a little thing here that's gonna highlight orange when somebody's entered our blind spot. Now, hopping inside the van. Whoo, all right. So we've got our basic transit styling there. Great look, but starting off on the driver's side door, we've got our unlock and our lock buttons. Can adjust our side view mirrors. We've got our window up and down buttons there. And we've also got some storage along both the driver passenger side. Hopping inside so we can adjust our fog lamps. Our, well, first of all, we can adjust our running lamps. Always recommend just keeping it in the auto setting there. We can easily turn our fog lamps on or off. And then we can also control the brightness of the cluster screen. Looking at the steering wheel itself, we are going to be a manual adjust, but it is a telescopic wheel. Looking at the driver's seat there. So we do have a few different levers. So this first one is going to literally raise the seat up or we can lower it down. We can easily adjust our backrest here as well if we need to. And then we can also slide our seat forwards and backwards. Just to the left hand side of the pedals there, we do have our hood release. So we would literally just crank that once in order to be able to get underneath the hood. Now moving into the first row of the vehicle, this seat is, it's actually surprisingly comfortable. Like you'd think for an entry level van with a price like this, the seats wouldn't be the greatest. Now, are they gonna be the same style luxury seats that you're gonna find inside of a Lincoln Aviator? Absolutely not. But you do have a nice amount of comfort here. We do have a few interesting components. So right along the back, we actually do have something for some added lumbar support. So we can literally just kind of move this thing up and down in order to get us some added lumbar support there. If you're not a big fan of the seat, you can do an aftermarket install of different options. You can get some seat cushions and covers and things like that as well. We've got our cloth seats that are available there and you don't have the option for a leather inside of this, but we do have vinyl seats inside of the base trim level. But overall cabin sizing is great. We do have a few levers on our side there so we can literally lower the seat down. We can raise it up, whatever the case may be. And this is crazy. This thing is so great. Okay, so still dropping down with the seat as far down as it'll go. Like this is outrageous. Like there is so, so much headspace there. Like I'm a foot and change at least of headspace up overhead there, which is incredible. So if you're taller, you will absolutely be able to fit inside of this thing. No problem. So we do have another lever there. We can literally move this backrest back and forwards there as well. The headrest itself is actually a four-way adjust. So you can hear the clicking there. Locks it in place all the way in order to be able to release it as well off a couple different levels. So we do have the option of easily customizing this seat for our liking. And that's the same for the driver and for the passenger seat, which is nice. Now, one cool thing about the passenger seat is that we also do have the flexibility of being able to fold it down. So if you need to create a little bit more space, you can do that, which is a nice thing. You could technically fully remove this seat as well if you wanted to create a different sort of configuration. It's a simple bolt down there. So you do have that as an option. And bringing the seat back up is super straightforward and there it is. Now, this is just gonna be a basic summary of the interior. So the steering wheel cluster, as well as that media screen. 
if you're looking for a walk around and how this stuff works, like how to use all the different buttons here, how to connect Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, things like that, check down below because I have put together comprehensive videos on how all of these things work. But let's look at some things that are a little bit blaring and the reason why you want to look at the XLT versus the XL base trim level. So one good thing about the XLT is this media screen. It's a 6.5 inch touch screen, which is great because when we throw the car into reverse, we can see so much more than the four inch screen that would come standard inside of this. Now the 22 Transit Connect is still using the Sync 3 technology that was in the last year's model as well. But we do at least have the support for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which you will not have inside of the XL. So something to think about there, we can use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, things like that directly through this middle screen. One other thing is that we also do have a wireless charging pad. So the technology there, the screen by itself is absolutely worth the upgrade. And with some of the other features like the included Ford Copilot 360 package and then the fog lamps and things like that, just make the XLT infinitely better value than the XL. But that's my own personal opinion. It's gonna depend on your business needs and things like that. Now, looking at the actual steering wheel itself, it is fairly nice. Nice and comfortable there. Typical Ford styling with our logo. Our stick on the left-hand side controls our high beams. So we can easily flash those on or off. There is a button on the very tip of the stick, and that's the one for the lane keeping system. And that lane keeping system works three different ways. So if you start veering over into a lane without signaling, you get a steering wheel shake, almost as if you're running over rumble pavement. Way number two is it'll gently nudge you back into your lane. Way number three, it'll gently nudge you while it's also giving you a little bit of a steering wheel shake as well. Now, we do have a few other options there. So right side is going to let us figure out what's going on with our front windshield wipers. We've got one pad there on the left-hand side, which is gonna control the little cluster screen. We've got the option for adaptive cruise control and things like that, which, so this specific one doesn't have adaptive cruise. It's just your regular cruise control on the bottom left-hand side there. On the right side, so we have another pad there, and that's gonna let us answer, hang up at a phone call, increase, decrease the volume, and things like that. Now, we do have the option for factory navigation inside of this thing. We'd have to get it at the time of ordering because you can't simply just install factory navigation. It's the whole screen itself. There's a component built in with for GPS, essentially. But like I said, even if your Sync 3 screen doesn't have factory nav, you can still use Android Auto or an Apple CarPlay, use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze directly through this screen. We've got some basics for our audio control there. And with the screen itself, as nice and as big as it is, if you find it's distracting, we can turn the whole thing off if we want to. We do have the option for wireless charging. So the wireless charge capability is standard in the XLT, which is always a nice thing. Now, the wireless charging it would be nice if we did have the wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. I think those two things just go hand in hand. The new 2022 Ford Transit, so the full-size van, will be utilizing that new Sync 4 technology. So I'm like, maybe one or two years before we see that inside of the Transit Connect as well. But as we start to move down, we've got a series of different climate control settings, single zone climate control. We've got our eco mode. We can turn our traction control system on or off. We've also got our auto start stop system. We can easily toggle that thing on or off and we can also turn off our sensing system. So our park sensors, if you're not a fan of getting that beeping, you can turn it off, but that's kind of the idea of getting the park sensing system. So here nor there. We do have an old school style shifter, which is nice. We've got our park reverse neutral drive and then a manual mode. And the manual mode is great because we do have our plus minus buttons on the actual shifter itself on the left hand side. So we can literally adjust what gear we're in as we go, which if you're looking for a bit more power is a great option. Down a little bit more, we do have two individual USB ports as well as another 12 volt power point. We do have a few cup holders there, little storage area, a manual parking brake, as well as a little storage space. So storage space there is nice. There's nothing too crazy inside of this thing, just a little bit of storage. So we don't have any extra USB power points and things like that. Now, overall dash visibility is fairly good. Like I said, I'm six feet tall, but if I were to play like I'm a little bit shorter, <laughs> so visibility over is nice. You do have the option of cranking the seat up a little bit more as well. So that one we can use to lower it, also raises it up, brings it forward, etc. We can move the seat forwards, backwards to our liking as well. The steering wheel itself is telescopic and it's manual, so we can easily adjust this thing out as necessary. Now, taking a look up overhead here, there is quite a little bit of space up here, and we do have a little pocket a little bit more towards the top right-hand side, so a little storage area there. Now, moving up overhead, we've got some basic cabin control lightings there, and we do also have nothing for a sunglasses holder, and the reason why, because we've got a little overhead compartment there, which is great. So we need to store in maps, booklets, papers, whatever the case may be. We do have quite a little bit of storage space up overhead. 
And that brings me to another interesting point because directly from the factory, you can get bulkheads and things like that installed as well. So gated pass-throughs in order to get into the back to block things off, etc. So you could do that directly at the time of ordering from the factory, or you can do an aftermarket install. There are a ton of upfitters that are available there. You could do the upfitting obviously yourself. If you're handy, you can build in shelves, bed units, whatever the case may be. It's literally, what's your imagination like? The sky is literally the limit, which is kind of nice. Now moving back forward again, we do have our visor there. We do have a vanity mirror with no light. We can extend this thing out as well, and it does block the entire side there, with the exception there's like an inch roughly of space there that it doesn't hit. And it is a teeny little bit flimsy when it's extended all the way out there, but at least we can block all that sun out if we wanted to. Click that, log it back into place. But overall styling in this thing is great. Up overhead, we do have like a carpeted top there as well, which is nice. And then that's kind of split between the metal in the back there as well. But overall, this thing is fairly impressive. We do have some options for some different upfitting packages and things like that. You could do all sorts of things after market because people get crazy creative with this thing, using it as a camper van, commercial van, or whatever the case may be. But overall, this is a nice option if the transit, the full-size transit, is a little bit too much for you. The Transit Connect is great. We do have the two-seat option there. But if you're looking for something with a few more seats, you'd want to look at the Transit Connect Passenger Wagon. I've got a video that should be showing up somewhere on the screen up and around. It's in the description as well if you want to look at the passenger version of the van instead. One of the interesting things about that passenger van is that we do have the option of removing those seats if we want to. We've got flat fold storage options and things like that as well. But overall, I am impressed that if you're looking for just a regular, a basic van, like something to transport, maybe you're a mail carrier, things like that, you're a small delivery company, this is a good option. It's fairly good on gas, front wheel drive. You could look at adding all seasons on for that added grip in the wintertime as well. But that was a look at the 2022 Ford Transit Connect cargo van. What did you think? Like I said, if you're looking for something basic, you're looking for something simple, this is a good option. It does have some nice technology standard, nice technology available as an option as well. But if you have any questions, you're not really sure which way you should go, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. I'm more than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. Chat with the people over at Yorkdale Ford or Formula Ford. They're incredible at their jobs. They know what they're doing. But if you have any questions or any comments, drop down below, let me know. If you enjoy the video, thumbs up and share it with your social networks and think about subscribing because it definitely helps the channel grow. Until I see you next time, take care. We do have four, oh, six. We've also got our, our, our blah, blah, blah. We, we've also got our, our for